So just to talk to the process a little bit, I mean, probably what, 20 minutes before the pick, our phone started ringing and, and really didn't stop. So, you know, we had to really work through, you know, kind of what we wanted to do there, uh, you know, looking through all the options. And I think, you know, ultimately it came down to just the talent. Um, he's a really talented young man. Uh, you know, the way I would describe him is a shapeshifter. Uh, the way he can move his body, the way he can attack the quarterback, I think, Probably next to Andrew, the most happiest person was, was Jim Swartz. Um, just with our attacking style, he really fits our model and our style. So uh, just really excited with, with, the, with his ability, with his upside, with his ability to impact the quarterback. Um, those are the things I would highlight just to start, but really excited. To, I mean, really excited to get him. Uh, I mean, we worked through it. it it's funny. I, I told Kat when we were sitting there, um, we worked through a few scenarios uh, earlier this week, um, and this was this was one of them. Uh, so I think we had had played it out in our minds and, and kind of thought through what was the best uh, choice and decision for us at the time, and ultimately it just came down to, to to the players. Sometimes you just have to sit and and you know collect talent for your team. So that's that's how we thought through it. The end of the a uh, report on him says he. He might be a little light to uh, play in the NFL. What, what is your response to that? I think um, when you look at how um, we play the position and how we ask our guys to get off the ball and, and how athletic um, they need to be and how quick they need to be, that's what Michael is going to bring to the table. I mean, Jim got on the phone with him, gave him a quiz, um, and he was ready to roll, and you know he's about to he's about to be the engine of this defense. And uh, I'm not going to use the words that they use, but um, let's just say mess things up in the <laughs> in in the front there. So I think I, I think that's what he's going to bring to the table. Was there uh, more than one player option that the Browns would have taken there? Yeah, I think I think we felt good about what our options were. Um, you know, again, that's probably again we were working through that. You know, I, honestly, I don't think we expected as many calls as as we got, um, so that maybe changed a little bit of uh, how we thought through it, but we felt good about, you know, our alternatives regardless of what we needed to do. But fortunately, we didn't have to. Yeah, I think, I mean, we, we had enough scenarios and, and enough options to to feel good about whatever we chose. When you see go off the board before you guys get up there, does, how much of that, does that affect the thinking of, well, maybe this is the right time to take it, that position? Yeah, I think that's just a part of, you know, the calculations that Andrew has to work through in his head uh, as the picks are being made. I think it started early with Newton, uh, Aurora, um, those guys are going off the board, then Fisk. Then you start to think maybe, you know, he goes a little bit earlier. But I, I credit Andrew's patience, um, you know, not, you know, getting too nervous about, you know, him potentially not making it to the pick and, and it worked out. You know, sometimes it doesn't, though. Like, that's... That's sort of the risk you take, um, and again, it's just you know, it's just a little bit of a calculation. And I think once, you, as you get experience in this, I think you you know, you kind of get a sense of like who's interested and who potentially could take them. And you know, you just just kind of sometimes it is a roll of the dice. And the thing I would add there is the pass rush skill set on the interior is really something that we were um, coveting. And and when you look at where the market is going at that position and how these guys get paid, like that's really something that. Um, to have that still on the board at 54 was a was a, a great outcome for us. So, so you added Cooper Jefferson, Rissan, Hurst, and, and uh, Harris, and, and you have uh, uh, IKEA going into his second year. So is Michael Hall going to contribute as a rookie? Do you think? I think he's got to earn it. You know, just like all our guys. Uh, you know, we'd love if he did. You know. Um, Look, you can never – she just said it. You can never have enough guys who can impact the quarterback, impact the passing game. So, you know, again, he's got to come in, obviously integrate himself into the to the way we do things. But we hope he does. Um, but I, we also – I think Andrew has talked about this, but we try to position ourselves where we don't feel like we need to force him to, to do that. Um, this is one of those things where, you know, hopefully he, he, he reaches his maturity and his peak – you know, in a few years, uh, we're not necessarily worried about day one. Does Michael Hall come in and play 80 snaps? Um, he's got to earn it, you know. So day one is just coming in, you know, being on time, being in the right place, and then we'll see what it looks like in September. And, Tony, I would add, like, 
as Jim, Jim does a great job keeping the guys fresh and having a really good rotation in there. So as Glenn said, you, you can't have too many. Yeah, I'm going to go back to what you were saying about the position itself. Mm -hmm. That run on tackles, the way they're getting paid. How are you seeing the profile of this position change, you know, especially over the last few years? I mean, it's rushing. I mean, the, the premium is really on the ability to rush the passer from the outside, from the inside, and really it's all across the line now. So so getting to the quarterback and, and making sure you can impact the game there, I think it's just been um, – has just been really, really uh, an emphasis for all teams and, and guys that can get off the ball, guys that are quick, guys that can really um, bring that to the table, I think are just going to continue to either go off in the draft quickly or, or just get paid on the open market. Well, to go back to what you were saying in your last answer, I mean, the fact that he's not even 21 yet, how enticing is that when you're evaluating him and, and what you see on film? Yeah, it's definitely a part of it when you're thinking through who these players will be you know, year one, year two, year five, um, you know, the age component, the the experience, not only, you know, just playing in college, but just their, their full life of football. So, you know, it's, again, when he's doing what he's doing at 21, you're hopefully expecting him to just only get better. So it, it's it's a part of it for sure. Was it a great experience last year with DeWan and how he was able to come in here and function so well and just get thrown right into the fire. Uh, did, did that come into play at all in this decision? I think it's a credit to like our coaches, our player development staff. Like One thing we take great pride in is how we um, get to know these players before they're in the building and once they are in the building, how we put everything we can around them to support them, help them develop, and hopefully have them as contributors as early as possible. Um, so definitely great experience with Dewan, and, and that's something we want to put in place for every single player that becomes a Brown, and Michael's going to be no exception to that. Was there, I mean, you talked a lot about the strengths and the potential. Is there something specifically you look at and say, this is something he really needs to zero in and to, you know, to really maximize his potential. Is, is there a specific trade or, or, or part of his game you, you, you see currently that, that, that fits that bill? I mean, you could say that for every guy. So, yes, you know, I think all these guys have something they can work on. I think you can go from miles to – to anyone on our team, they're trying to get better at something. Do you want me to pinpoint a specific? I think for him, the sky's the limit, you know. So, I th you know, ultimately, he's got to come in and just maximize what he, what he, what he is. You know, I, I don't think anything restrains him from being as good as he wants to be, but himself. Um, that's how I would put it on this player, to be honest. Have similar grades on players from different positions. What determines the player? Is it your roster that de determines who you'll pick? Like if you're look, debating over a linebacker receiver and Michael Hall, is it strictly his talent or do you look at your roster and say he's liable to help us sooner than the linebacker or the receiver? I don't, I don't know that it's black and white and even in any year. Uh, you, you probably should anchor your decisions a little bit to just your overall philosophy, uh, and I think we try to do that. But I, I would probably be remiss to try to pinpoint it and say, hey, you know, Andrew thinks about it. Uh, systematically this way every single time. Uh, I think it's pretty fluid. I think sometimes it is the talent, sometimes it is the state and the nature of your roster and your team. Uh, you know, sometimes it's it's just the overall value you get or can receive from that player or, or, or move back or whatever. So, I, I, it's, you know, I don't know if there's a straightforward yes or no answer to that. Receivers on the board, were they among your possible choices? Yeah, we talk about all scenarios, as as Glenn mentioned earlier. So most definitely in, the, in our process, Tony is really collaborative. So when you think about what we, goes into that decision, there's just so many uh, so many elements that goes into the integrated pro projection, whether that's the, what the data, uh, what our model is saying, what the coach's evaluation, when we had these guys in a top 30 visit, the character information, medical, as you know, like there's just so many things. So yes, definitely positional value is, a, is an element as well. But as we kind of all bake into get, bake, bake it all in together, um, it just helps us inform inform where we're going to go. Did you say something about the market of where defensive tackles were going? Can you either I didn't hear it, can you elaborate a little more on that? Of course, as you could, like you saw last, uh, I mean, I would say last two free agency periods, how how high these guys are getting paid now, and when they can rush the passer, there's definitely been a league premium uh, on that skill set. Um, you can think of 
even you know older rushers like I'm thinking of Javon Argrave two years ago when he went to free agency ago when he went to San Francisco like just that's just where the market is going with these players so when you, you can find that skill set in a draft um, that's on a cost control uh, player contract and that just gives you a lot of flexibility and, and gives you other gives you optionality to do other things somewhere else. I know it's not all about sacks but he had one and a half last year. Um, did you see a reason for maybe not huge production there? And what did you see that said it can be better at the next level? I think you, we just saw all the things that we look for at the position. Uh, I think I led it with I led with his positives. You know, the stats are sort of volatile, especially on the D line. Sometimes sacks are not indicative. Uh, but again, that's you know again ultimately it's a it's a production business. So you know we hope he is much more productive than that, but. You just hang your hat on the traits, the ability, and just you know some of the other other components that we value pretty highly. We think he came out well in those areas. So, the team talked about how important culture was, especially on the defensive side. So, when you evaluate character, what stood out about Michael's character that fits this group in that regard? I think um, on the front end, I would say. That room is super strong from a character standpoint, from a from a uh, leadership standpoint. I mean, it's just with guys that we brought in, guys that we brought in, sorry, to um, to complete miles, whether that's Dalvin, Zadarius, like we have a really strong room there. So we feel really good to bring those young guys into this room that they're going to have um, mentors, older players they can lead on. And I think Michael's energy um, is definitely going to fit right in into into the culture and, and, and um, how this room is built.